Hi everyone, my name is Ashton and I'm a family and emergency nurse practitioner and one of the nurse practitioner instructors here at SNMP Reviews. In this video, we're diving into pediatric asthma treatment guidelines, specifically for ages 6 to 11. Now, if you've been studying the adult GINA guidelines, you've probably gotten asthma treatment down, but the pediatric guidelines have just a few small differences that we're going to talk about in this video. But before we get started, if you want to dive deeper into this topic or any other board prep topic, be sure to check out our review courses and also don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a video. Let's start with a quick refresher of what asthma actually is. Asthma is a chronic respiratory condition that causes reversible airway obstruction. That's the key word, reversible. The airways become inflamed, swollen, and produce mucus, but these changes can improve with treatment. Asthma symptoms tend to come and go, and common triggers include allergens, cold air, exercises, and stress. What is the number one symptom? Coughing, especially at night. Wheezing, shortness of breath, and chest tightness are also very common, but we may not see those unless there is an active flare-up. The gold standard for asthma diagnosis is spirometry. We're looking at the FEV1 or forced expiratory volume in one second, which tells us how much air a patient can forcefully exhale in one second. Here's the key. Asthma is reversible. So we test FEV1 before and after giving a bronchodilator. A significant increase using the bronchodilator strongly suggests asthma. Now, GINA guidelines have shifted away from focusing only on spirometry numbers. Instead, they emphasize symptom control and quality of life, because what really matters is how well a child's asthma is managed day to day. All right, now that we know what asthma is and how we diagnose it, let's talk about treatment. The Global Initiative of Asthma, or GINA, 2024 guidelines use a stepwise approach meaning we adjust treatment based on how often a child has symptoms and how well their asthma is controlled. So, how do we decide what treatment to start? Well, we categorize children into one of three groups based on their symptom frequency over the past months. And so, let's go through those steps. For step one, patients are having mild, infrequent symptoms less than twice per month. Here we use a low-dose inhaled corticosteroid, or ICS, only when a short-acting beta agonist, or SABA, is taken. So this means the child doesn't need daily controller therapy, just as needed therapy. Now, with step two, formerly called mild persistent asthma, patients have symptoms twice a month or more, but it's less than daily. Now for this step, we start daily low-dose ICS as maintenance therapy, and they still have that SABA for quick relief. Now we have step three, which used to be referred to as moderate persistent asthma. Now these patients have symptoms most days, and they may even wake up with asthma once a week or more. Step three is when we move to daily maintenance therapy to prevent exacerbations. There are three preferred options here. First, we can increase the ICS to a medium dose with a SABA as needed. We can use a low-dose ics laba combination with a SABA as needed. Or we can switch to maintenance and reliever therapy using a very low-dose ICS for Motorol. Now, don't let this trip you up. The key takeaway here is that ICS for Motorol is the only LABA that can be used for both maintenance and as a reliever. If you're using a different ics lava combo, a separate SABA reliever is still needed. Now, moving to step four, this is when I personally start to get nervous. These kids have daily symptoms and nighttime awakenings, so they need medium dose ics lava, which is for Motorol. And at this stage, we should definitely consider referring out to pulmonology. Now, if the child's asthma is still uncontrolled, it's definitely time to call in the pulmonology experts here. Now we are on to step five. And so you may notice I didn't even include it on the slide here because if they're in our primary care office, we need to refer them ASAP. 
they may need higher dose ICS LABA or other types of medications. Now, oral corticosteroids should be used as a last resort, and that is because of their long-term side effects. No matter what step a child is in, they will always need a reliever medication for quick symptom relief. I wanted to point out that for patients ages 12 and up, Formoterol plus an ICS is the preferred rescue inhaler. But for pediatrics, the preferred reliever is still a Saba for steps one and two. But for children in step three and beyond, we can use low-dose ICS Saba, specifically Formoterol, as both a controller and a reliever. Now remember, Never, ever, ever use a LABA alone in asthma management because this is a big safety concern. All right, that wraps up our video on pediatric asthma. And here are our references. Thank you all for watching and letting us support you on your journey to preparing for your AANP or ANCC board exam. You are one step closer to becoming a real deal nurse practitioner.